Axiom's getting friendly with Europe, Virgin Orbit are continuing like nothing ever happened, China's been inspired by Ingenuity, and there's so much stuff you probably haven't heard of because Starship has been dominating the news. This is Tomorrow Space News. We're kicking off the show with our SpaceX update, but I'm not actually going to get into too much detail with the launch. You've all seen it by now, and there's no point wasting time regurgitating information a hundred other channels have already put out. However, I will share my opinion on the current situation. I know there is debris everywhere, but I don't actually think this is the end of the world. As Elon said on Twitter, SpaceX data suggested that the pad could withstand the booster. We now know it obviously couldn't. But this is a test flight designed to collect data. SpaceX have already built one Stage Zero, they're building another at the Kennedy Space Center, and I have no doubt that they can rebuild this one. It'll take time, but it's not the end of the world. SpaceX now has data to play and design with, so even though it may be a while before we see the next launch out of Boca Chica, I'm 100% certain it isn't the end. I mentioned the Cape just then, and Launch Complex 39A Starship mount is certainly something that is going to be redesigned. We saw the dust cloud caused by the lack of flame diverter reaching over 120 metres into the sky and debris being littered around the launch site and into the gulf. I'm going to take a guess that NASA wouldn't be too happy with that kind of dust cloud and debris being produced at the country's, if not the world's, most historic launch site. I'm pretty certain that with proper flame diversion and water deluge and the addition of a crew tower at Slick 40, a Starship launching from LC-39A is more promising. All of this design and iteration with the ground service equipment will also help with the construction of new pads north of Launch Complex 39 in the future. Sweden is set to send an astronaut to the International Space Station on a commercial mission within the next year, according to an agreement signed by the Swedish National Space Agency, the European Space Agency and Axiom Space. ESA will provide a crew member for the 10-day mission, which will be organised by the SNSA, with Axiom operating the flight. It's important to note that while ESA and Axiom only confirmed that the astronaut would be European, the Swedish National Space Agency stated that the individual would be Swedish. Sweden's only astronaut to date is Krista Fuglesang, who was selected by ESA in 1992 and completed two missions on the best space shuttle, STS-116 and STS-128, in 2006 and 2009 respectively, which were both operated by Discovery. Sweden's second astronaut, whoever they may be, will take part in a mission that will include work with the Swedish Space Corporation, the Swedish Armed Forces, Saab and FAM. The country is following in Italy's footsteps as it has been working with Axiom since 2018 and plans to fly an astronaut on the AX3 mission later this year. Virgin Orbit have been keeping us updated over the last week as they're getting ready to launch their next flight from the wing of Cosmic Girl. On Wednesday, Virgin Orbit took the Boeing 747-400 for a spin around Southern California, departing Long Beach for firstly a touch and go at the Mojave Air and Spaceport, where it went on to simulate a launch over the Pacific Ocean. We've also received word that the investigation into Rocket 7, the vehicle that flew the Start Me Up mission, has nearly concluded. Following a month-long investigation process, the anomaly that occurred in January has been successfully recreated on the ground, with the fuel tank outlet filter becoming dislodged and travelling into the second stage's engine. Virgin Orbit have performed nine further tests with an improved design, all of which have concluded with a successful result. The company is aiming to launch once again later this year. Some of you may have questions about how Virgin Orbit can continue operating as if nothing ever happened with only 100 employees and filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So here's a massive oversimplification. Chapter 11 bankruptcy is a type of bankruptcy proceeding that allows businesses to reorganize their debts and continue operating while they work to pay back their creditors. It is the most complex form of bankruptcy in the United States and I've left the US court's website down in the description if you want to read further yourself. I am not a legal expert in any means. Astra have been awarded a task order worth 11.5 million US dollars under the Space Forces Orbital Services Program 4. In layman's terms, the OSP-4 is a USSF program which allows the Space Force to rapidly acquire launch services from qualified providers, which Astra is one of, after being pre-qualified in 2021. Rocket 4 will launch STP-S29B in April 2025, carrying an ESPA-class payload and multiple CubeSats. It'll follow STP-S29A, which was awarded to Northrop Grumman, which will launch on a Minotaur 4 next year. 
Ingenuity, the small little helicopter that could, that accompanied the Perseverance rover on the Mars 2020 mission, has shattered all expectations when it comes to endurance and ability. Designed to demonstrate powered flight on a world other than our own, it's completed 50 flights as of the writing of this script, travelling over 11 and a half kilometres and clocking up just under 90 minutes of flight time. On Mars! China has been sharing some more concrete plans of their Tianwen-3 mission, scheduled to launch in 2030, utilising double Long March 5 launches. It's a sample return mission, with the plan being to return half a kilo of Martian stuff back to Earth. Now, here's the interesting part. To collect samples around the landing site, the mission will either include a six-legged crawling robot or a helicopter like Ingenuity. Once the samples are collected, a two-stage launch vehicle, similar to NASA's Mars sample return concept, will see the samples delivered to a low Martian orbit, where it will dock with an orbiter, which will then return to Earth. JPL's success with the helicopter is already spreading to other nations' Mars plans, which is super exciting to see. We saw the return of the Starlink V2 minis last week, but first, thank you to the citizens of Tomorrow who helped to fund the show month after month. Your kind contributions month after month helped to keep 204 activated and alive, and in return, the ground support, suborbital, orbital, escape velocity, and Plaid Pro Plus citizens get access to a variety of different perks. If you want to see how you can see new scripts as they're being written, gain access to our member streams, and much more, head to the join button below. And of course, if you just want to watch our content and share it around, that is greatly appreciated as well. The Starlink V2 Minis are back, and with the current state of Stage 0 at Starbase, V2 Minis are probably the only V2s we'll be seeing for some time. Launching at 1431 Universal Time on Wednesday, the 19th of April, Starlink Group 6 Mission 2 departed Space Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. After stage separation, the booster supporting this flight, E-1073, returned to Earth and concluded its eighth flight on the drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. The first launch of the V2 Minis, Group 6-1, saw some issues with orbit raising, so it'll be interesting to see how these 21 satellites fare over the coming weeks. We then had a launch from India, with Talios 2, Lumalite 4 and Poem 2 launching on this PSLV-CA. It launched from the first launch pad at the Satish Devon Space Centre on the East Coast at 0850 UTC on Saturday. The first payload, Talios 2, is a Singaporean observation satellite weighing in at 741 kilos. Lumalite 4 is a 12U small sat also from Singapore, developed by the Institute for Infocom Research of ASTAR and the Satellite Technology and Research Centre of the National University of Singapore. It's a demonstration of the High Performance Spaceborne VHF Data Exchange System, or VDES for short. The final payload, POEM2, isn't actually a payload itself, instead it's the fourth stage of the PSLV. When fully spent, it became a hosting platform for multiple different small, non-separating payloads from multiple organisations. The list of launches coming up in the next seven days can get confusing, as some launches are still net April, with May just around the corner. First up, we have a Falcon 9 with Starlink Group 3-5 on Tuesday from Vandenberg. Falcon Heavy returns on Thursday with Viasat 3 Americas. O3B, Empower 3 and 4 are departing the Cape on another Falcon 9 on Friday. And our final confirmed date is Rocket Like a Hurricane, Rocket Lamb's second flight of NASA's Tropics program from the Mahia Peninsula in New Zealand. There are three flights which are still classed as never earlier than April, and although unlikely to happen, they are NRL 68 on a Delta IV Heavy from the Cape, Victus Knox on Fireflies Alpha from Vandenberg, and Aquajo 1A from Juquan. And coming up this week on tomorrow, Dr. Tamitha Scove will have a space weather update on Wednesday, Dali's bringing us some news on Thursday, and we're back on Friday for the live show. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.